Hello, greetings and salutations. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the BFC. I hope you're doing well. If you are watching these videos and you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video and you haven't subscribed, shame on you. Subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not shaming anybody here. We are open here at the BFC, and this is an information sharing platform. I'm not going to charge you anything to share this, DD. That's not what I'm, I'm about here. We're about quality due diligence for potential long-term investments. So, yeah, will I go live tonight? I usually go live Wednesdays at 8. I do have a couple things going on with real estate, but I may or may not. If you see me go live, if you have those notifications on, hop on and we could talk really about whatever you want. Um, I mean, we've been, I've been covering a lot of stocks, a lot of businesses. From ILIS, uh, QIND, CGRA, Triple DX, CYBL, I mean, RITE, I, IGPK, I mean, a ton of them. And I've had a lot of the management on the show. And uh, that's one thing I want to continue to do is bring you guys firsthand DD and give you guys the opportunity to ask these questions. I am working on an interview with IFIS CEO, um, Mark. And so hopefully this works out. And we're going to uh, sort of see if we could uh, get things together and uh, meet this week sometime to uh, a record an interview. So if you have any questions regarding ticker IFUS, leave them in the comment section. So that way I can throw your questions at Mark. So tomorrow is the big day for ILS and QIND shareholders. JP Backwell will be on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange doing an interview. So, and we're not going to get to see this interview until the 26th. That, that's when they're going to release it because um, it's pre-recorded. So I look forward to seeing what he has to say. This is just like another indication that they are doing things the right way and there are big things to come and I'm just completely excited about it. So, and also they are going to be having a board meeting on the 16th, the day after, uh, to discuss the dividend and how QIND and how this uplist is going to affect ILA shareholders. So be on the lookout and uh, there's a lot of information to come. So I will be covering that interview live Um once that interview releases, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it, and we're gonna do some. We'll do a reaction vid as to, to what I think. All right, guys, let's get into this. The latest QIND press release. Quality Industrial Corporation provides an update on progress towards its New York Stock Exchange American listing. All right, we have a quote here from J.P. Backwell, who was on the show multiple times. I'm gonna put the link to all the interviews down in the description. So have a listen. There's tons of information there. I hope to have J.P. on sometime this summer and, and connect with him. He's always a great guest. Let's take a look at his quote. We have made significant progress toward QIND's NYSE American listing, and we wish to proactively keep shareholders and those who are following our progress informed of steps taken and the steps we plan to take over the coming weeks. We look forward to announcing the appointment of our investment bank this week, following our S1, uh, filing our S1 shortly thereafter, pressing on with our roadshow and delivering this significant milestone for our QIND and ILIS shareholders. This is absolutely huge because ILIS is the parent company and this is adding value to ILIS. The numbers are amazing. When you look at, um, and I am going to go on this little tangent, if you go on OTC Markets and you look at how many employees ILIS has under the ILIS umbrella officially, it's 1,800 if I'm correct. That This isn't a mom and pop shop. This is a big business that's completely undervalued, and they're just getting started because they've laid a solid foundation. Let's take a look at some of the bullet points here that they've laid out. QIND wishes to update shareholders and interested parties that it has taken or is currently in the process of taking the following steps towards its NYSE American listing. Let's take a look. Preliminary application for review by NYSE has been prepared in conjunction with appointed Capital Markets Advisor, New stock offering on S1 registration statement has been prepared. Company is preparing to appoint and announce the investment bank that will underwrite the offering this week. Roadshow commencing from late June through July 2023. Preparation to appoint new QIND CFO with extensive international capital markets experience. I'm really excited to see who they're going to they're, they're gonna put in that position. Finalizing appointment of independent board of directors as required, and he did mention that that's that they're going to follow through with that. They have to; it's required. Following approval of NYC American application, the uplist to NYC American shall take place immediately upon effectiveness of the company's S1 registration statement. So, as they do this, as they as they put their application in, don't get all antsy and be like, "Oh, why aren't they on the NYC? Why aren't they doing it yet?" Why? Because they have to file that S1. It is contingent on them filing that S1 registration statement. Let's take a look at the quote from the man Nick Link, the chairman of QIND. 
We anticipate that our roadshow and uplist to NYSE American will drive demand in our stock so that the underlying value of QIND will materialize for our shareholders. The company's trailing price-to-earnings ratio is currently almost four times below the median for its sector. Our board does not believe that QIND's full underlying value will be realized on OTC markets, which is one of the key reasons why we keep our stern focus on uplisting QIND to the New York Stock Exchange American. All right, this is crucial if you're an Eyeless shareholder. You know, somebody asked me, well, are you invested in QIND? Are you invested in Eyeless? I go, me personally, I'm investing everything in Eyeless. I may jump into QIND before uh, it takes off because I think this is an easy 4X or 5X based on what they're doing. So, I mean, I called this one at, at 28 cents. When it was WSFT, when they when they uh, gained the controlling block for this ticker, I was like 28, and it's funny, that's where that's where they uh, uh, obtained it was 28 cents, and I think that is a great uh, price to get in. Whether it hits that now, I don't I don't know. I'm not looking at the chart of it right now, but either way, from its current value, it should um, go up substantially. So this could be a substantial gain for investors that want to maybe uh, buy shares and flip it back into ILIS, which is something that I would do and maybe keep a little bit of QIND long term. Uh, but uh, pretty much all of my um, investment into ILIS is long-term capital gains now. So I'm not touching that. I'm with these guys long. But if I could take advantage of an opportunity with the QIND uplist and, and uh, save some for long-term, but flip most of it right back into the parent company, I may do that. They're doing a lot here, guys. It's really, it's really remarkable. And this is just the beginning because I think they're going to announce another acquisition uh, under QIND, which is huge news. So, yeah, there's a lot to look forward to with this. I, I am wishing uh, all these guys the best of luck. I think QIND is going to be a home run. I think eventually the stock is going to be valued between 5 to $10 based on the reading that I'm doing. And, hey, listen, do your due diligence, all right? I'm going to put all those interviews with uh, JP Backwell. I'm going to put them in the description. I'm going to put the link to this article in the description. Go on OTC Markets. Type in QIND, type in ILIS, look at the filings, look at the disclosures. And if the, and if you're reading something that, that doesn't make sense, reach out to somebody. Um, you know, I'm, and I have Sam Aker back on the channel at some point, whether it's tonight or next Wednesday. You know, if you have a question on a filing or a question in regards to, like, maybe one of the, any of the filings or anything like that, you know, he's a, a, a knowledgeable source because he works in that field. So maybe reach out to him. Or if, you know, you, you have a question in regards to um, – just a company PR, it, it doesn't kill you or it won't hurt to like reach out to these companies and, or, or send an email. You know, a lot of people are, are afraid to like reach out to the company directly. You know, I've recently had questions about, are they going to reverse split, reverse split? That's always the go-to of like, what are they going to do? Reverse split. You, there's more to it. There's more things that could be damaging to a ticker uh, than a reverse split. And, and one of those, and the most important one is bad management. And one thing that ILIS and QID does not have is bad management. So, you know, they are open with their shareholders. If you have a question, reach out, do the due diligence, you know, do your homework. All right. There's only so much I could bring you on this channel, you know, and I'm still learning. I'm still doing some digging. There's stuff that I'm learning every day. I, I spend the night reading, you know, and, and catching up on my due diligence, you know, because that's what's going to fuel my conviction for the investments that I make. And you should be doing the same thing, too, and, and being responsible. Yeah, this is an information sharing platform. If you have anything interesting to share, share it down in the comment section. I want to see you guys light up that comment section. So you guys have a wonderful day. Maybe I'll see you tonight. This one's going to be sort of uh, random if I do do it. So listen, you guys have a great day. And remember, there's more that binds us than breaks us. Peace.